Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 13th of February. PM Modi kicks off Aero India 2023, calls it example of country's expanding capabilities. Pakistanis worry as government approves hike in tariffs to pacify IMF. And Shahabuddin Chupu set to become Bangladesh's next president. And now for all the details. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday inaugurated the Aero India 2023 in southern Bengaluru city. In his address, he said the biennial show is a shining example of India's growing capabilities and the presence of more than 100 nations at the event shows the trust that the entire world has in India. The five-day event comprises of Defence Minister's Conclave, a CEO's roundtable and breathtaking air shows. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday inaugurated the 14th edition of the Aero India 2023 at the Air Force Station in Yelanka in southern city of Bengaluru. Addressing the event, the Prime Minister said that Bengaluru sky is bearing testimony to the capabilities of new India. This new height is the reality of new India. Today, India is touching new heights and transcending them too, Modi said. He added that Aero India 2023 is a shining example of India's growing capabilities and the presence of more than 100 nations at this event shows the trust that the entire world shows in India. Recalling the development made in indigenous defence manufacturing, he said, Tejas, INS Vikrant, advanced manufacturing facilities in Surat and Tumkur are the potential of self-reliant India with which the world's new alternatives and opportunities are linked. दुनिया के सबसे बड़ा डिफेंस मैन्युफैक्चरिंग देशों में शामिल होने के लिए तेजी से कदम बढ़ाएगा और इसमें हमारे प्राइवेट सेक्टर और इन्वेस्टर्स की महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका रहने वाली है आज मैं भारत के प्राइवेट सेक्टर से आह्वान करूंगा कि ज्यादा से ज्यादा भारत के डिफेंस सेक्टर में इन्वेस्ट करें भारत में डिफेंस सेक्टर में आपका हर इन्वेस्टमेंट भारत के अलावा दुनिया के अनेक देशों में एक प्रकार से आपका व्यापार कारोबार के नए रास्ते बनाएगा। Aero India is a biennial air show and aviation exhibition termed as the biggest air show of Asia. The five-day event will conclude on February 17 and will comprise of Defence Minister's conclave, a CEO's roundtable, MOU signing ceremony, and breathtaking air shows. 809 defense companies, including MSMEs and startups, will also showcase the advancement in niche technologies and growth in aerospace and defense sector at the event. Airbus, Boeing, Dassault Aviation, Lockheed Martin, Rolls Royce, and Hindustan Aeronautics Limited are among the major companies participating in the current edition. And news from Pakistan, opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan on Sunday lambasted former army chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa, blaming him for his ouster from office as the prime minister. In a virtual address, Khan called Bajwa as the super king held him responsible for the country's current economic and political crisis. Former Premier and Opposition PTI Party Chairman Imran Khan on Sunday once again lambasted the former Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa for his ouster and called Bajwa as the super king who made all the decisions during the Khan's tenure as Prime Minister. Remarks from Imran Khan came during his interview with American network VOA in which he said the plan to oust him from the office was exported from Pakistan by General Bajwa who had told the U.S. officials that Khan is anti-American. Later in a televised address to his supporters, Khan reiterated his remarks and added that Bajwa was responsible for the political and economic problems faced by the country today. Bajwa was getting credit of every good decision and Imran Khan was used as punching bag for every wrong decision, he said. But when क्योंकि उसने उस पे تسلیم بھی کر دیا کہ نیب کو بھی وہ کنٹرول کرتے تھے سو نیب بھی ان کے ہاتھ میں تھی تو اکاؤنٹیبلٹی اگر وہ نہیں فیصلہ کرتا تو نہیں ہو سکتی کیونکہ سپر کنگ ہے وہاں بیٹھے ہوئے 
Khan also criticized the ruling PDM coalition, blaming it for damaging the country's economy. He said government agreeing to IMF conditions would open inflation floodgates, pushing millions of Pakistanis down the poverty line. Imran Khan is the only Pakistani prime minister to be ousted in a no-confidence vote in parliament. While Pakistan's army denies any role in politics, it is believed that it plays an extraordinarily influential role in security and foreign policy. More news from Pakistan. People across Pakistan have expressed worries after the government's nod to further increase gas and electricity tariffs to unlock IMF funding, which is critical to keep the cash-strapped country afloat. An agreement would release over 1.1 billion US dollars and would also unlock other avenues of funding for Pakistan. People across Pakistan are worried as the government has approved an increase in taxes on gas and electricity to resume the stalled IMF International Monetary Fund bailout, a move which is bound to lead to a further rise in inflation. A deepening economic crisis has led to heavily indebted nations' foreign exchange reserves held by the central bank falling to $2.9 billion, barely enough to cover three weeks of imports. Locals in Karachi city said they are staring at an uncertain future now, with financial burden rising. IMF ke kal ke news dekh raha tha. To IMF ke jana report mein ye bataya ke gas ka bill aur bijli ka bill dono ke andar jana azafi tax lagenge. Awam pehle itna tax de rahi the aur mazid tax degi the awam jaiye kahan? Bhooke mar jayenge sab. Abhi awam ka hal to dekhe ham. Bahar nikle ham. Awam ka pata chalega awam kis hal mein jaari hai. Or लोगों के अंदर कुवतें खरीद दी हैं, महंगाई का दौर है, और दो साल पहले कुछ हालात बेहतर थे, इमरान खान को रोते थे, इमरान खान हट गया, शहबाज शरीफ आया, और बुरे हालात हो गए, अब आने वाला और आएगा, वो भी खतरनाक डॉलर देखें कहाँ पहुँच गया, 300 करीब जा रहा डॉलर। Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif earlier this month called Pakistan's economic situation unimaginable. The talks between the IMF and Pakistan on a reforms agenda was set to continue virtually from Monday as the two sides could not reach a deal last week. An agreement would release over $1.1 billion and would also unlock other avenues of funding for Pakistan. In news from Afghanistan, Sher Mohammad Abbas Tanakzai, Taliban's deputy foreign minister, has announced that the Islamic Emirate will provide access to work and education to all its citizens particularly women and girls, within the Islamic framework. The Taliban late last year banned women from universities, sparking international condemnation while it already faces isolation globally. The Deputy Foreign Minister of Taliban-led Afghanistan administration, Sher Mohammad Abbas Tanikzai, has said that the Islamic Emirate will provide access to work and education to all citizens, particularly women and girls within the Islamic framework. Speaking at an event, Stanik Zai said that work is underway to create work and education opportunities for all Afghan citizens based on Afghan tradition and Sharia law and the authorities are trying to fix the issues. The Taliban last year banned women from universities in Afghanistan, sparking international condemnation and despair amongst the young women in the country. No foreign government has formally recognized the Taliban administration since it seized power, with some diplomats stressing it must change course on women's rights. Enforcement of sanctions and a cut in development aid have contributed to the country falling into an economic crisis that has left more than half the population dependent on humanitarian aid to meet urgent needs. Well, in news from Bangladesh, Mohammad Shahabuddin Chupu, former judge, is set to become Bangladesh's next president after the ruling Awami League, which holds an absolute majority in parliament, nominated him for the top post on Sunday. 74-year-old Chupu will replace President Mohammad Abdul Hamid, whose tenure ends on April 24th. Born in northwestern Papnan district, Chupu was a leader of Awami League student and youth wings in the late 1960s to early 70s. He also took part in the 1971 Liberation War and was imprisoned for waging protest after the 1975 assassination of Bangladesh's founder Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the father of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. He has served various political and state roles in the last decades. 
The main opposition outside parliament, Bangladesh Nationalist Party, cannot nominate anyone since all of its seven lawmakers resigned in December 2022. And Nepal's finance minister, Bishnu Podel, has reduced the budget size for the current financial year by 14% to 1.549 billion Nepali rupees. He said that the Nepal's economy is under extreme pressure due to the low revenue collection as a result of the government's import restrictions and the slowdown in the supply chain. Nepal's Finance Minister Vishnu Podal on Sunday published the midterm budget review report in the House of Representatives, with the government this year reducing the size of the budget by 14 percent. The fiscal budget presented by former Finance Minister Janardhan Sharma, which stood at 1.793 trillion Nepali rupees, was reduced by his successor and now stands at 1.549 trillion Nepali rupees. Padel said that the Nepal's economy is under extreme pressure due to the low revenue collection as a result of the government's import restrictions and the slowdown in the supply chain. He also acknowledged that even though the target was to keep inflation within the limit of 7%, it has reached 7.26%. <laughs> Surging global energy and food prices have hurt the import-dependent economy of Nepal. However, its foreign exchange reserves rose to 10.3 billion US dollars as of mid-January, helped by a boost in tourism earnings and remittances from Nepalis living overseas, its central bank said earlier this month. The reserves are sufficient to cover more than nine months of merchandise and services imports, reports suggest. Well, bird watchers and tourists in India are flocking to bird centuries and riverbanks to witness the splendid sight of hundreds of flamingos and other migratory birds that have arrived in the country to escape the extreme cold of their Arctic home grounds. Take a look. Tourists in India are thronging bird sanctuaries and water bodies in large numbers to witness the splendid sight of migratory birds that have flocked to the country during the winter season. Several species of birds including flamingos, bar-tailed godwit, bar-headed goose, northern shoveler, western marsh harrier and painted stroke have arrived in the bird sanctuary in Bhigwan town in western Maharashtra state. Bhigwan has traditionally been host to hundreds of species of birds but the news of the stroke's come as a pleasant surprise for wildlife enthusiasts. अलग अलग वैरायटी के बर्ड्स बहुत आते हैं जो बारटेल गॉडविट अलास्का कंट्री से माइग्रेशन करता है बार हेडेड गोस हिमालय से माइग्रेशन करता है रुडिशल डक चक्रवाक ब्राह्मणी बदक बोलते हैं उसको नॉर्दर्न शावलर ऑस्प्रे ग्रेटर स्पोटेड ईगल वेस्ट मार्च हेरियर और एनी मोर बर्ड्स से अलग अलग वैरायटी के बहुत बर्ड्स से ब्लैक विंग स्टील शेक आटा जो पेंटर स्टार कर रहता है उसका पीछे टेल में बहुत बढ़िया कलर रहता है वो वो फैमिली फोटोग्राफर देखने को अच्छा लगता है उनको मीन वाइल लोकल्स इन नॉर्दर्न प्रयागराज सिटी वर सीन फीडिंग माइग्रेटरी गर्ल्स व्हिच वर फ्लाइंग ओवर संगम द कन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ द होली गंगा यमुना एंड द मिथिकल सरस्वती रिवर्स फ्रॉम अर्ली नवम्बर ऑनवर्ड्स दीज माइग्रेटरी बर्ड्स कीप अराइविंग इन दार्ट्स ऑफ इंडिया फ्रॉम कोल्ड कंट्रीज एंड मेक अ रिटर्न ड्यूरिंग द स्प्रिंग सीजन well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.